when you're ready. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the July 9th, 2024 legislative session, Town of Asani. Rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Flag. Thank you. Council Member Meyer. Present. Council Member Manikio. Here. Council Member Filterwheel. Here. Council Member Wines. Present. Uh, Supervisor Feldman. Present. Public hearing and public hearings, code text amendment for Indian Brook Cronton Porch and Terry Municipal Watershed Protection Overlay District. Do we have anybody on the public or Zoom that would like to speak in regard of this public hearing? Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing. Um, zoning petition for BE zoning district. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Supervisor and uh, members of the board and staff. Brad Schwartz from the law firm of Zarin and Steinmetz. It's good to be here. Um, we represent Crotonville Owner LLC the new owner of the former GE training facility on Old Albany Post Road. Um, I'm joined tonight by Claire McPhail on behalf of the owner and Bonnie Von Olsen and John Canning from Kimley Horn. So we are here tonight for a public hearing on proposed zoning amendments to the business education district regulations in your town code. This property is in the BE district as it's known for short. In fact, this property is the only property in the BE district. These amendments would introduce additional potential uses um, to reuse the existing buildings on the site consistent with the prior operations at the site for decades. Um, some of those uses include conference center, hotel, restaurant, senior living, together with the traditional accessory uses. And all of these uses together would allow our client the flexibility to repurpose the existing buildings and help maintain the economic viability and success of this important asset in your town. I wanna emphasize right up front that our client's immediate goals and objectives is to implement the conference center, hotel, and restaurant. The senior living is a potential use that may or may not come to fruition one day in the future. And also important to emphasize, there is no new construction planned at this time. Um, our client would adaptively reuse the existing buildings. There's no new construction planned of new buildings, nor expansion of the existing buildings. Um, Bonnie has some slides to walk your board through in the public that would show the existing buildings on the property. Um, John Canning is here to talk about traffic and parking. And then at the end of the presentation, we can come back to the nuts and bolts of the proposed zoning amendments, if you'd like. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Oh, there we go. Uh, my name is Bonnie Von Olsen with Kim Lee Horn in our White Plains office. I'm a planner and landscape architect. And I'm going to be going through, as Brad said, there are no proposed mansions or additional buildings. So we're just going to go through the existing conditions and give orientation to the site. The site is 62 acres in total. You can see the red outline is, is the exterior, although there's several tax lots in there. The existing... Um, Primary axis is Old Albany Post Road. Can you not hear me? Oh. This one? In here. Uh, I'm going to speak up. Uh, is this better? Okay. Uh, the site is, I'll start again, 62 acres in total. Uh, the primary axis is at the southern end of the site at uh, Old Albany Post Road and Route 9A. Uh, Indian Brook Reservoir is directly north off the site, and to the west and the east, there's open lands and residential development. Uh, Fowler Ave approaches the site 
from the west side and uh, Hillcrest Avenue runs parallel off this uh, parallel to the side on the west leading to the reservoir. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not leading to the reservoir. Hillcrest is the neighborhood that's to the west. Apologize. Uh, can go to the next slide. This will give you a little better orientation of the actual buildings that are on the site. And we've submitted uh, detailed lists of with a key that indicates each building and its size and so forth. Uh, the campus was built originally in 1956 with a substantial renovation undertaken in 2013. Um, much of the perimeter is wooded buffers uh, with the interior areas you can see are lawns and uh, open fields. The existing roadways uh, include Shady, Shady Lane Farm Road, which crosses the site north-south through the center. And there are 12 existing buildings along with surface parking lots, some recreation facilities, and wooded open space with um, a network of trails. The most site, a recent site plan amendment on this property is um, one that was in 2013 to approve those trails being mapped on the site. I will not go through each building unless you want me to, but the largest four buildings are Croton Hall, the Village, the Learning Lab, and the Leadership Exchange. And you probably can't see those labels from here, but those uh, I can point them out if you want me to. Um, there are 248 lodging rooms, including 188 in Croton Hall and 60 in the Village. Uh, all the buildings on the entire campus have been used for conference center purposes, as Brad said. Um, we have a table that we've included in the materials that were submitted with the petition that includes, as I said, the name of each building, the floor area of each building, and the um, which totals actually around 319,000 square feet total, all the buildings, and the existing use, and then the proposed use for comparison. And in many cases, the proposed use is same, so it doesn't change at all. Um, another slide, which just for your reference, um, this is the table that I referred to if you'd like to go through any of them, existing buildings, um, existing use and proposed use. And then the next slide shows the, oh, it looks like it's just the top corner of it, but there's a site plan that was submitted to the planning board for the record for this um, submission. The zoning is before your your board, obviously, and, and you're gonna be the lead agency for Seeker, but the planning board will be the one that approves um, a site plan. So that's included in your materials and theirs as well. Would you like to answer any, uh, have me answer any questions right now, or should we continue with um, John Canning's traffic and then a discussion of the zoning and then hold the questions? All right, I'll pass it to John then. Okay. There? Yep. Thank you. Good evening. I'll do this now before I forget. Uh, good evening, um, Madam Supervisor and Council Members and staff. Uh, for the record, my name is John Canning. I'm a traffic engineer. I work for Kimley Horn. Uh, we were retained by the applicant to prepare a traffic and parking study, and we submitted them to the town. We basically studied uh, all of the intersections from the site out to Route 9. Uh, we studied them in the morning peak hour, the afternoon peak hour, uh, and the peak hour on a Saturday in the middle of the day. We determined that all of the intersections will continue to operate acceptably, acceptably with level of service C conditions and will have adequate capacity to accommodate all the uses of the conference center. Uh, we performed a parking analysis to look at how much parking the center would generate it compared to, to the existing parking on site and determined that in almost all cases that would be adequate as well. 
And based on these findings, uh, our studies conclude that there will not be a significant adverse impact on traffic or parking conditions. So that's the, the short end of the story for traffic and parking. But if you have any specific questions on any of the uh, various aspects, we'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. I just want to say for the record that the board is not going to be closing the public hearing tonight. Um, so the um, as was mentioned, um, I believe by Bonnie, um, the town board is serving as lead agency for SECRA for the environmental review. Um, the notice of intent went out, but the 30 days is not up. So you cannot declare yourself a lead agency. So this is certainly a great opportunity to hear what the applicant and their consultants have to say, but there will be additional opportunity for the board and for the public to comment. I, I am not hearing loud as I normally do is volume or no, not really. Sorry. I just want to make sure everybody can hear. Would it help also if I took the microphone out of the holder? All right. Yeah, it's easy for all of them. I, yeah, there you go. Thank you, Jesse. Please flip to the next slide. And we could zoom in. And, and obviously, this is in the packets. I'm sure it's available on the, on the town website for folks to review. Um, but, yep. So this is the proposed zoning amendments. What we did was we took the existing BE regulations and simply redlined them. That way, it would be easy to track what the proposed changes are. I am not going to read them all tonight. Don't worry. Uh, but just to highlight some of them. Um, so there's a definition for senior living facilities. If you could scroll down or... We added a, a, a purpose section um, in consultation with Valerie. Next page, please. Um, so here, letter B, site plan. Um, so in the event that in the future there was any new construction that would require site plan approval by the planning board, so we wanted to make that clear uh, right, right in the proposed amendments. Letter C, the permitted uses. Number one, keeps the existing business training that's been operating for decades. And two, three, and four, the conference center, hotel, and restaurant. Um, letter E is a special permit by the zoning board for senior living. And letter F are uh, a, a list of accessory uses. Um, that is what it sounds like. It's uses that are accessory to the principal permitted uses. Um, and if you scroll down to the next page, please. There's a whole long list. Again, many of them are already in the code, including the, the helicopter pad, even the uh, solar, the energy systems, and the battery storage, all existing already in the code. We just made some tweaks and some clarifications and added some, such as I can't read those from here, but EV charging stations, ballrooms, spa and wellness facilities, administrative offices, and other activities customarily associated with conference center, hotel, and, and restaurant. Um, we keep going, and I'm going fast. Slow me down if you would like. Um, letter H is a section called special requirements. Again, scroll down. I want to focus on the, the most important ones towards the bottom, seven and eight. Number seven um, restates our client's goal to um, and requires that to the extent practicable, the property owner shall endeavor to incorporate these permitted uses through adaptive reuse of existing buildings, which our client is, is certainly seeking to do. And number eight limits um, the total number of guest rooms in the hotel conference center and any potential senior living facility in the future to a maximum of 300 in total. And those are the proposed amendments. And that completes our presentation. One question, but the 300 total rooms. Yes. 48. 248. And then it's probably you assume 52 more would be senior living or you just, uh, do you know the breakdown? And it could also just be changing the demising walls and what currently exists to increase the number of rooms. So it's it's uncertain exactly where those additional rooms would be located. So there's a couple of ways those could be accomplished. Got it. Thank you. A uh, couple questions. 
Um, there is the old Croton Aqueduct Trail that runs through campus. Mm -hmm. um, GE had cut off access to the public, but now that this will be a publicly available space, is it possible we can recreate the trail through the property, um, thereby allowing bike bicycle traffic and you know, it would be an attraction for you as well to have a hotel on the trail. Um, but I know the Old Quoten Aqueduct Association and um, that was Chester County Parks would be interested in reconnecting it. They have it go around right now on a very steep slope and it discourages people from reaching the dam, mm -hmm. um, finishing the, the entire trail and it's a very long linear trail. That's one question. Good question. It's something to consider and we'll take it back and look into that. Absolutely. And uh, this is coming from the neighbors. How married are you to the helicopter use? Neighbors would be really happy at you. Clay, Clay, when you come to the microphone. I don't have any real active, any plans to actively use the helicopter pad. It's certainly going to be used far less than it ever was when, you know, Jack Welsh was flying in and out. But um, I do think there is the desire to to keep it just in the, you know, off chance there is a need for it. It would be extremely rare circumstances, though. Okay. And um, we did have an agreement about um, how many uses there were a month. There's a report that comes to the town once a month. We could talk about that offline. Yes, that, that would be, that's totally fine. Okay. Um. I see that there's going to be um, conference use in that little house. Is that current? In which little house? The, the tiny little. Right. Oh, so right. So that would be um, either an amenity space or potential office space. Okay. I was. I had that yeah. right. All right. It looks small. Okay. Um, but that's not going to be used for any kind of large scale meetings. Okay. And the coffee house, the current coffee house would be the restaurant. Um, as well as possibly a coffee shop, right? Yes. Beautiful. Okay. And that um, coffee shop would be open to the public. Yeah, I like that coffee shop. Cute. Question? I have an incidental question. I was wondering if there's a chance, I've never been to this facility, if it's possible for us to... That would be terrific. Absolutely. I'll coordinate that with Christine. We'll schedule that. Are there any other board members that would like to be involved in a site visit? Okay. Okay. You, All right. You, I'd, um, I'll tell you what I mean, I'd like to hear if there are any comments from the public. Thank you. Oh, just put your name and address on the paper and say your name and address, please. Uh, Lynn Peterson, 7 Reservoir Road. Um. So, hi, everybody. Thanks for letting me see. Um, it, it sounds like a really beautiful project. Um, it sounds like something that would kind of stimulate the economy in the town and all sounds very nice until you have to live next to it. Um, I, I have concerns about some of the proposals to the uh, amendments um, that, you know, that are kind of contradictory in their presentation where on one hand they're saying this will not change the, um, the, the the use of the property as it has been in, you know, for decades in use. Um, but on the other hand, they want to include um, a hotel, a restaurant, senior living facilities, um, accessory garages, sewage treatments, liquid materials, fire, all kinds of other um, uses that um, I'm not quite sure are what we have currently in use. Um, it extends the use well beyond what is um, the current purpose, including, and what, what is most concerning, is the potential for 300 um, permanent residential units. Um, right now we have, you know, well, with G, they would have their, their trainees come in for the week, they would get dropped off, off the side of the high, you know, from the highway side, they would come in, they would do their training, and they would leave. Um, this proposal would bring in, you know, potentially 300 new units and also changing the language and the definition of what a senior living facility is to include 
55 and 55 and up, um, which doesn't exclude families with children. Um, so I, I'm, I'm envisioning, you know, a future where the whole place is just crawling with people that we just can't accommodate. And, and you know, the traffic is another questionable um, statement. If you know, if you come off the Shady Brook Farm exit into Crotonville at that stop sign, I don't know where we're fitting 300 or more cars on a daily basis if we have 300 potential residential units. Um, I would strongly urge the the board to consider, um, you know, I, I do not oppose if it even was a senior living facility, if there was strict requirements on who is a senior living in the facility and not, um, you know, just anybody uh, 55 and older, you know, I could, I could live there and bring my, my daughter and my, my grandchildren potentially. So um, yeah, there, there's a lot of contradiction I see in the proposal. And um, I also am kind of, I don't know if this is normal. I've never um, had any introduction to this type of transaction, but the owner is a foreign LLC, an anonymous entity that we don't know, and they want to be a good neighbor, but we don't know who they are. So that is a little bit strange to me that we have a, um, you know, a proposal coming from a, an anonymous person or group of people and represented by fancy lawyers. Um, so I yeah I would I would really hope that you would take into consideration the the reality that that the this impact would have on the local community. It's very small. It's already overcrowded. Streets are crowded with cars. I I don't know. I'm terrified that they would open up the Fowler entrance for normal use on a daily basis. That would completely overwhelm our our streets. Um. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 it does sound exciting and it does sound like, you know, I would love to be able to walk you know, a trail and go to the coffee shop too. Um, but do we really need, you know, potentially 300 um, additional units um, with maybe 300 or 600 additional cars or families and whatever else. So thank you for your time. And I hope that you do consider our concerns. Thank you. Good evening, Violet Benny. Let me just write this down, get it out of the way. What is the other side for? Oh, okay. Thank you. Wow. Um, I've lived here and with the property that abates the conference center, it used to be GE for 30, it'll be 31 years in November. In the course of the time, the changes that have gone on, and I've spoken about this to the board already, it's, it's not, you know, my taxes keep going up. My house was just reassessed. I guess no one's aware of the fact that my kitchen stove is older than I am and I'm 61. My point is the taxes keep going up, everything keeps going up, and yet what I purchased is not the same. Yes, I understand that all things change, but you know what? How about changing it in my direction a little bit? I don't feel like my house should be reassessed at a higher value now with what's about to take place. You know, when GE was there, there was a sense of control. GE brought the people in, everyone was monitored, they knew what they were. I bought a house with private property. Now you're telling me my backyard's going to have strangers coming in, that there's going to be a conference center that we don't know who owns it. It's a foreign entity. And um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, who are they having conferences for? I mean, it could be great. There could be a lot of really wonderful things that could bring a lot of money into the town. I'm all down for that. But I don't want NAMBLA or the KKK in my backyard. So, uh, and the, the opening up the trails, I'm sorry, I have to beg to differ. I just feel that really puts my safety in, in danger, you know, and it's not what, it's not what I signed up for. So, you know, I think that there needs to be something 
to not to be done. And for us, the neighbors whose property does abate the property, uh, the conference center, it's lovely you all are taking a trip, but I don't know you as my neighbors. I'd like to see what's going on there. I think we should be invited to go along on the trip to see the facility. So I feel really strongly about that. Um, I definitely want to see Austining succeed. I've been here a really long time. I keep waiting for downtown to come to life. Not giving up yet, but I hate to get to the point where I am going to get to the point where I'd rather switch than fight because everything lately has been for the last few years has been an argument where things are changing and it's becoming less and less the wooded uh, suburban community that I've moved into and more and more like Long Island condos and flats and condos. Oh, look, there's a bunch of trees. Chop it down. Let's put up more condos. It's ridiculous. And it's not what it once was. And I don't know where you're talking about. The tra traffic has been unbelievable. I used to sit in my backyard and I was in the middle of the woods. Now I feel like I'm sitting on the LI uh, LIE. It is so loud by nine, right where that, uh, right before the Croton train station entrance, that whole area is really loud now. And it is consistently loud because I was out at like 10 o'clock at night on a, a Saturday, noisy. Okay, so Saturday night, fine. I was out Sunday morning at five. Yeah, because the sun was out. So I mean, it was light. So I was out at like five in the morning. There was still noisy traffic. So the thought of bringing, you say 300 units that could possibly convert into something permanent, that's not 300 cars. That's 300 cars possibly, could possibly be 600. If it ends up that people end up having people move in, because it's true, people in their 50s have children these days. If there are people that are living with children, that's 300 cars, now went to six, could possibly be nine. Come on, it's, it's, it's a bit much and it's not, well, I would not pay what I paid for my house now if this was what it was going to be. So, you know, I feel we're, something's being done to us in our neighborhood, and there should be a little bit more consideration to what our neighborhood was about. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to make a comment? The audience? Anybody online? Is anybody on Zoom that would like to speak? Please raise the um, virtual hand. No? Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn this public hearing to the July 23rd meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Did you? Uh, all in favor? Or... All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you for time this evening, and we'll see you at the continuation of the hearing, and we'll schedule a site visit to uh, accommodate your request. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Well, but, and I guess I'll add, maybe we'll address some of these comments in a subsequent letter to the board rather than take the board's time this evening. Okay. Thank you. Supervisor and town board announcements? Okay. The Spray Park at Lewis Engle Waterfront Park is open for the summer. Park is open seven days a week, noon to 7 p.m. There are some Wednesday exceptions. On the, on the Wednesdays in July and August 7th, the Spray Park will only be open to the public from 3 to 7 p.m. If due to the camp being there. <laughs> River Jam has begun. The fireworks and dual concert event was a big success. This Friday, we'll have the Boomer Brothers Band on the stage at 7 p.m. The food trucks and craft bedroom corral will open at 5 p.m. Please check the website at ossiningriverjam.com uh, Ossining for more details. And for the first time, there's a waterfront shuttle bus for the Ossining River Jam. Beginning on July 12th, the Ossining Rec Recreation and Parks will have a free shuttle on Fridays for River Jam. The shuttle will loop around Westerly Road and Water Streets from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., stopping at Lewis Ingle Park, Free Westerly, Boathouse, Water Street, Central Avenue, and Quimby and Main Street, Quimby at Main Street. Right. If you haven't heard, the Austining High School Band has been selected to play in the 2024 Pearl Harbor Memorial 
Parade in Hawaii. There are many fundraising efforts in the works. If you are interested in donating, please see the supervisor's update for a QR code to their donation page. The Juneteenth Council is celebrating Bethany Arts Community for all they do for the community. Um, this event will be held at the Ossining Public Library tomorrow night, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Summer Acoustic Music Series begins on Wednesday with Jamie Carney. The shows are at Market Square uh, beginning at 7 p.m. Thursday, down at the Lewis Engel Waterfront Park, the La Grea Dance Academy, in conjunction with the Mike Risco Band, will be performing an evening of music and dance performances. This event starts at 6 p.m. There's a food truck also. I think one empanada is there. Saturday at the Bethany Arts Community, Springing Into Action Workshop for Kids 12 and Under will be held in two sessions, one at 10 a.m. and one at 2 p.m. On Saturday, you can see La Pompe Attack performing as part of the Music in the Box series at Westchester Collaborative Theater at 7.30 p.m. Mike Risco Band at the Boathouse will be Saturday, uh, July 13th at 8 p.m. Um, Sunday, July 14th, the Hear Hear Music and Art Festival um, will begin at 12 noon down at Lewis Engel, Engel Waterfront Park with free live music, art, and dance performances by Westchester dance artists and uh, additional information from ENU and other things will be there. They will have food, drink, dessert, and vendors. So that's Sunday, July 14th at 12 noon. All right, Spark, a theatrical experience at the Bethany Art Community, will have three shows this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. For more information, please go to bethanyarts.org. The Monday Summer Jam, uh, Summer Jazz Concert Series begin, begins at July 15th. Performance by Nielsen Mata. Mata? Mata. Anyway, all shows are at Henry Gordine Park. Um, and it's a great day. You think. As always, our Austin Public Library will be hosting many events. You can look at their website at austininglibrary.org. Um, and there are even more events on my supervisor's up. Thank you. Does anybody have any other? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, liaison reports. Any public comment on the agenda items? Besero shall be accorded to one four minutes opportunity to address the board and any of the resolutions on the agenda. Don't have anybody in the public. Do we have anyone online that would like to speak? No. Board resolutions. Approval of minutes, June 25th, 25, 2024. Resolve that the Town Board of Town of Austin hereby approves the June 25th. 2024 minutes of the regular meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of voucher detail report resolved that the Town Board of Town of Austin hereby approves the voucher detail report dated July 9, 2024, in the amount of $473,988.64. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Dallas Cemetery Association Bank resolutions were as the town of Austin was recently notified that the two Wells Fargo accounts in the town's name that have not designed signature and were as Wells Fargo has explained that the accounts in questions were initially opened by the Dell Cemetery Association would no longer exist and it was absorbed by the town in 2004. Now, therefore, it will be resolved that the town board and town of Austin hereby authorizes Supervisor Elizabeth Feldman as the key executive with control of the Wells Fargo account ending in 1261 and 6295 to be the signature for, on both accounts. Do I have a motion? No move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. New York State Liquor Authority Special Events Permit Application. Hear, hear music and art festival. Resolve that the Town Board of Town of Austin hereby authorizes the supervisors to sign the landlord authorization form of the New York State Liquor Authority Special Event Permit application made to hear coffee plus beer for the here 
Hear Hear Music and Art Festival on July 14, 2024 at Louis Angel Park. And before the resolve that the applicant will provide proof of insurance in the letter to the, to the town in the form acceptable to counsel to the town. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution authorizing grant agreements for installation of a solar PV system on roof and solar PV lining in the parking lot. We resolve that the town board hereby authorizes the supervisor and any other applicant, applicable town of officials, the staffs, and contractors to execute and grant disbursement agreement and all associated, associated documents with the dormitory authority of the state of the New York for a thousand, a, a hundred thousand grant for installation of a solar PV system and roof and solar PV lining in the parking lot. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Second. Okay. Um, did update this with the state. It's for the parking lot and the dog park, uh, the solar PV lighting. So, okay. So for the parking lot and I dog park, amended. As amended. In favor. Aye. Aye. Resolution authorizing grant agreement for renovation of the Ryder Park playground. Be resolved that the town board hereby authorizes the supervisor and any other applicable town officials, staff, and other contractors to execute a grant disbursement agreement and all associated documents with the dormitory authority of the state New Year for a seven thousand seventy five thousand grants for renovation to the Ryder Park playground. Excuse me. I do have a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contract Tyler Technologies resolved that the town board of town of Austin authorizes the supervisor to sign an agreement with the Tyler Technologies, Moraine, Ohio, 45439, uh, for the town wide assessment revaluation at the cost not to exceed 357650 Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Finance Capital Project Number Twenty Twenty Four Fifty Two Fifty Nine Twenty Twenty Four Town Wide Assessment Revaluation Assessor Resolve Resolve that the Town Board of Town of Austin authorizes authorizes opening a Twenty Twenty Four Capital Project Number Twenty Twenty Four Fifty Two Fifty Nine entitled Twenty Twenty Four Town Wide Assessment Revaluation for the Assessor's Department with a project budget of. $380,000. The project will be founded for a transfer from capital project 5187 townwide reassessment value of 55664 and 11 cents in the transfer for general funds balance of 324,335 and 89 cents. Do we um I have a chart that will be is available online and also we will be available on the town clerk. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Finance 2024, Louis Angel Park Re Restrooms Construction Capital Project Number 2024-5258 Parks. We saw that the Town Board of Town of Austin authorizes adjusting 2024 Capital Project Number 2024-5258 entitled 2024 Louis Angel Park restroom constructions for the town parks apartment with an original project budget of four hundred thousand dollars to an adjusted project budget of four hundred eighty seven thousand five hundred the capital project will be funded from the federal community black development grant the dbg um so there's another charge that will be that it's available online and also will be available clerk's office someone wants to review it um, do I have a motion? I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Monthly reports. Resolve that the Town Board of Town of Austin hereby accepts the following monthly reports for the month of June 2024, Supervisor's Office and Tax Receiver. Do I have a motion? I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Visitor recognition. Visitors shall be accorded to one four minute opportunity to address the board on issues not related to the agenda by relevance of to the common good of the town. Do we have anybody online that would like to speak at this moment? Please raise your hand. Okay. 
to have a motion to adjourn to work session to discuss wetland consultant RFQ. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you for joining us for our legislative meeting. Uh, please stay tuned for our work session. Thank you. Valerie? How are we starting this? So, all right. So we put out a request for qualifications for a wetland consultant a few months ago. Um, not receive a local person that uh, we were hoping for. Uh, one of the things that we're looking for in a wetland consultant is a some somebody from the area that can respond to questions a little more quickly and um, has a breadth of knowledge about our area. Um, so we are proposing to put the request for qualifications back out and see if we can get a deeper point of What? I mean, what would be different from the first time that we I think um, we could, um, I don't know if that was working. Um, we can, uh, what we'll do is we'll specifically uh, target more uh, firms and then also specifically like reach out to them, asking them to apply. Uh, sometimes if, if some firms feel that, you know, sometimes firms might think that there's already been a, like another firm selected and they might not apply so this way we'll like reissue it and we'll specifically uh reach out to a number of firms to let them know that the town is actually looking for a list to be able to pull from and for the wetland work and it also involves uh going out and uh you know landscape like landscaping and arborist uh work that would be part of like site plan review they would also be able to do that work as well what are our neighboring communities doing? Are the neighbors have one? And so, uh, yes. Uh, so, like, the Village of Austin uses Kellard Sessions. Um, so I think Kellard Sessions probably didn't uh, put forth an RFQ thinking that maybe, you know, the town, I mean, a, a response because maybe they thought the town might, you know, not look, looking for somebody that's not associated with the Village of Austin. And again, if we have an RFQ list, right, it can have multiple firms. So there might be a project that Keller Sessions could potentially work on that not confl conflicts with something that they're already working on in the village of Austin or in the town of Austin. I mean, they do sometimes do private work in the town of Austin as well. So this is why we can reach out to some firms and let them know we're looking for a list, you know, so that, and depending on the circumstances, we could pull from one firm or another. out the identical one we did back in well what i'll do is i'll, I'll tweak it a bit um and probably and work with uh, christy you know have her review it as well again you know just to see if there's anything else that maybe uh we can really emphasize that the town is actually looking to uh develop a qualified list um and then uh we'll recirculate it and we'll reach out to other firms as well and expand our reach and instead of waiting for them to respond, we'll actually invite them to respond. Right, right. We can do that. Yes. And to, to Angela's point, you know, Valerie and I do work with other municipalities um, in the nearby. So and reach out to those firms, try to put it on their radar. You know, people are busy. They may they may not know what it, it entails. If, if it's, you know, if we're getting feedback that, the RFQ is too cumbersome and time consuming, then maybe we could revise it in that way, although I don't really think it is. But, you know, just start to have more of a dialogue. Yep. 
and in the in the interim, we do have the benefit of Valerie's firm that does have personnel on staff that can jump in. You know, I think Valerie's point that she made, and and Liz, um, you know, it would be ideal to have someone who's local, but right. we're not going to be just in a lurch um, if we don't have anyone who can provide these services because we can always turn to Nelson Boat for he's in the interim um, it, while we see what else could be. Right. Those services are in the Long Island branch, which is why we're saying that they're not necessarily local. Um, but we do have somebody that has worked with the planning board in the past reviewing a certain uh, plant, planting plans and stuff like that. So, And we do have wetlands, uh, people that can delineate wetlands that can come out um, if needed. So we do have somebody in the interim, but I understand the the town's looking for somebody more local and we'll find we'll find a list for you. Okay, thank you. Um, that concludes our work session topics. So, for joining us, joining us, I hope uh, everybody stays cool in this heat. Uh, eventually, it'll stop. And I believe <laughs> theory. Um, and I believe we're expecting some weather somewhere between uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So an eye out for thunderstorms and potential remnants of the. Uh, so thank you and thank you. you have to adjourn oh you have to adjourn to executive session for matters of personnel um advice of council and and contracts okay. second all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. thank you